Mary Carangelo, welcome to ENTV today. This is going to be fun. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Okay. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today because as you just said, before we got online, you know, you helping people level up through style, the clothing they wear or, or don't wear, the apparel, the colors. I'm sure you're going to go a bunch of places here. So where do we start with this? Because some people aren't as, let's say, convinced or aware that how they present stylistically matters. So can you give us a bit of a, a baseline of understanding and then from there we'll take off? Absolutely. Um, uh, let's refer to a study done by two psycho psychologists at Northeastern U University um, by the names of Adam and Kalinsky. So what they did is they took uh, um, probably between 58 to 200 students and they divided them up into two groups. One group they gave a white coat to that they told was um, belonged to a doctor. And the other group they kept in street clothes or they gave them another white coat that they said belonged to a painter. And then they gave them a series of tests that, that tested their selective reasoning. And those students that wore the coat that was symbolically perceived as a doctor's coat scored significantly higher than those students that did not. And so just the mere fact that they put on this physical piece and they believed that it belonged to a doctor, they stepped into that role of how that person would behave or how they perceived them to behave, which very intelligently, decision makers, um, high scorers on exams. And it was amazing that the results prove that time and time again. So that's one small example about the power of, of clothing. I mean, think about ourselves. Like when we see someone who is in a uniform, a policeman or a nun wearing her habit, or I mean, any uniform you can think of, there are uh, personality traits. There are attributes that were given to that person just because they have that uniform on. So that is the power of clothing and how it communicates to those people that are in front of you. Wow. Okay, just let, that just, just let me digest that for a second. Okay. Okay, so this gets down to belief systems because that's what's beneath. So when I put on the really nice jacket, if my belief system, can you walk us down that path? If I believe that jacket to be esteemed or to be garbage, Mm -hmm. If I'm a, can you talk, talk me through that, please? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm a big storyteller and I always please. like support um, anything that I share with some proof. So this was a story that a woman told me um, and she, I always ask these questions. Like if you can name a time in your life when you felt the most confident, who were you with? What you, what were you wearing and what were you doing? And this woman described a time when she was very small and she went to, um, it's just a public school and she was a tomboy and she loved to wear jeans and, you know, rough house and be dirty all the time. But her mother um, was always trying to get her into a dress. And so she finally convinced her to wear this pink frilly dress to school this one day. So she shows, shows up at school and the teacher is complimenting her and she's chosen to be the leader of the line. And now she had never been chosen to be the leader of the line before. So this girl, I'll call her Susie, was very astute. So anytime that she wanted to be the leader of the line, she asked her mom to put her into that pink frilly suit. Now, Susie proceeded to, to grow up and she was interviewing for her first job. And she chose to wear a navy blue suit, but underneath that suit, she opted to put a pink blouse on underneath it because it, it was associated with her getting her needs met and getting what she wanted. And so she took on that energy of that, that color of pink, the power of pink. And she felt confident during her interview. Granted, she was qualified for the job and she went to school for this position, but it was just that little bit extra that helped her feel comfortable in her skin and in what she was saying. And she ended up getting the job. Now, this is a true story. And this was not solicited. She came up to me after one of my presentations and she, can I just share this with you? So that's just a small example. And I have numerous stories that I could share to represent that. I find it fascinating. So do you get into the colors also as well as like, is it 
do you get into color? I don't know what the name is, but like color theory, psychological ways that colors show up, or is it is it more shapes? Or like, can you talk about all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, colors. I think are it's, it's kind of like art. You know, something that is beautiful to one person may not be beautiful to another person. Okay. And so I might be drawn to pinks and I love to wear pinks and that's what I feel the best. And you might be drawn to navy blues and you feel great in that color. So there's a difference between the colors that make you feel a certain way or the colors that make you look a certain way. So there are colors that might look better on your skin tone or there might be um, colors that like, like are more of a power color that you can throw to the power suit. Like people typically choose to wear a red or a bold color if they want to make a statement. So there are psychological um, behaviors or terms that are associated with colors. And so you might opt to wear one of those if you're trying to step into that energy. Yeah. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Cause it's subjective. What I believe about the color teal is subjective. Right. And I may want to wear it. I may also want to look at it because it evokes a certain emotion. So there's a subjectiveness to that. But in terms of psycho psychology, how do you deal with the fact that some people view garments in different ways? Like, is there a way, are there rules? Are there guidelines? How does it work? Is it science-based? Is it partially? Well, there's... <laughs> There's always rules and rules are always made to be broken, yeah. um, you know, so I mean, it really, it, de it depends upon what your goals are and it depends upon how you're using clothes as a tool. Uh, so if you were giving, I'll, I'll give this example, another, another story. So I have um, a gold box and it's wrapped up beautifully and I have a brown paper bag and it's all crumpled up and inside both of these containers is exactly the same thing. And I'm going to say that these two containers represent two individuals that have just interviewed for a job. Now, both of these individuals have similar backgrounds, come from the same socioeconomic you know, area. They both nail the interview questions and they both are very, very qualified. Who are you going to hire? Most people say they're going to hire the person that has brought their A game to the interview. My young millennial children will say, well, it shouldn't make a difference because they're, they're just as qualified. So why should you be judged on the clothes that you wear? You should be judged on who you are as a person, how hard you work, and all of the attributes that make you a great um, um, you know, person to be employed. But unfortunately, um, we are a very judgmental society and we also like individuals in front of us to sort of communicate in the same language that we are communicating in. So if you were going to go um, interview at Patagonia, you might show up in jeans and a t-shirt and it wouldn't make a difference. If you're interviewing for a corporate position, you shouldn't really be showing up in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt because that's not their culture. That's not how they represent themselves. That's not how they communicate in their language. Makes sense. Does yeah. that, does that help? Yeah. Yeah. So when people come to you, you help, is it women, just women? It's mostly women. Although it was interesting. I was hired by an accounting firm to address them during one of their summits because they had hired a bunch of millennials pre COVID and all these kids were working in their office in, you know, flannel shirts and in jeans and they didn't know how to communicate with them without stepping on a lot of toes to say you had to dress a certain way. So I took their HR descriptions as far as what professional dress is, what dress down is, and what street clothes are. And I sort of helped them understand what that was. And to attract more success and to attract more clients that they had to speak the language of the person that was in front of them. So I'm like, I'm not going to give my money to a kid who's, you know, dressed up in jeans and a t-shirt because she's not, or he's not showcasing the best version of who they are. They're not developing that no like, and trust. Once I know them and I, once I know they're brilliant and they can take care of me, I could care less what they wear. But at the beginning, when you're establishing that relationship, it's really important to, to kind of know, um, like how mm. to present yourself. Did, what did the millennials say? So it was really interesting. Um, I typically, you know, address women and the men were the ones who had the most questions. 
and they wanted to know about types of t-shirts. Like, can I wear a Hanes t-shirt underneath my, you know, my shirt or do I have to, you know, buy a $50 t-shirt? How do you wear your pants? Are they tailored? Are they, or can they wear them above the ankle? Because I know the Europeans that wear them above the ankle. Like, how do you, you know, choose a fitted shirt? I mean, it was, I was actually blown away by how many questions the men had. And it was more important to them and than the women at this particular um, summit. Amazing. Why? Well, yeah. There may be times where men stay silent. They don't necessarily want to be silent, but they're not always sure. Is it safe to open up and share? That's a, a thing a lot of guys sometimes face. So what are your favorite type of clients to work with? Who is your dream client? My dream client is anyone who wants to take a broader viewpoint about their how they dress and anyone who wants to attract more success to their lives whether that is getting promoted, whether that's attracting a mate, whether that's just feeling more comfortable in their own skin, I can sort of help them figure that out. I mean, I get into the their heart before I really get into their closet. And when I'm in their space, I actually, I, I go to women's homes and I, I look at their closet and I, I see what's there and what it communicates to me, like whether or not they're a creative dresser, whether or not they, they just gravitate towards blacks and browns and grays, um, whether there's price tags in their closet, whether, whether or not I can even see anything in there because it's so filled with clothes that have never been purged. And that also tells me about them. So it, you know, there there's, I call it the secrets in your closet. Like it really, it get, brings me into the soul of who you are as a person. And then once we've kind of talked a little bit that we can develop a plan to help them um, develop a more purposeful way of dressing and a purposeful way of purchasing. I love that. I get into their heart before I get into their closet. That's awesome. <laughs> Whether they want me to or not, I, I have to ask all these questions first because otherwise it makes no sense. I mean, I'm just there cleaning out their closet, but, but I want to leave them with a plan. They feel settled and they, they yeah. moving forward. They know what to purchase or what to wear that works with their body shape and that, that works with their personality um, and with their life. Isn't it amazing how one thing tells a story about the entirety of something like how you keep your car, how you keep your clothes? Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so how are you, how are you, how do you market yourself then as a stylist? Where where do you go to speak? You talked about, you give talks. Yeah, so I'm part of E Women Network. I'm um, I'm part of NSA and you know local networking groups in the area, and and so I offer my services there. Um, I've just launched a new website for myself, uh, so people can certainly find me there as well. I'm kind of on the precipice of moving forward more in the speaking arena. There's a group called Innovation Women, which is based out in Boston, Connecticut. Um, and that's another group that I belong to and just constantly, you know, working the pavement and offering my services and trying to get booked is what I'm well, doing. If you speak, just so you know, we have our second speak off here. It just announced yesterday oh. and people get to upload a three minute video. And then there's like uh, the finals, the community votes on who advances. And then anyway, but yeah, it's a, it's something, it's a free event for people that want to be speaking more. And it's okay. a way of reaching your audience. And there's, as more people come in the community, more people can discover you. So I'll tag you after in that. Yeah, tag me because I'd, I'd love to uh, participate in that. That'd be fun. Fun. You, can, you can speak on anything you want. So it's oh, there's like, no theme? Okay. Yeah, there's no theme. Um, at least not right now. It's like, yeah, talk about whatever you want. And then the community decides, do you go to the finals? So it's oh. it's fair, right? And it's fun. So we just did one and then, yeah. And then we're just doing our second one now. Okay, so what else do you want to talk about here on your interview before we wrap? Um, I, 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 I'm i trying to think. I think I pretty much covered everything. I mean, I, I'm writing a book, so that's kind of fun. I'm halfway through that. And it's, it's called The Secrets in Your Closet. And it's basically um, just breaks down everything that I've gathered in my brain. And I've written on post-it notes for the past 14 years. I'm putting it all into this book, as well as the narratives and other stories that people have shared with me it's, it's going to be really fun to read and i love we, that yeah the secrets in your closet secrets in your closet so it's a that what is uh, it's a double entendre right that's what it's called 
Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. double entendre i like that the secrets in your closet Ooh, this sounds so charming and yet who enticing what am i gonna find oh you have no idea you have to buy the book <laughs> find out right i love it i love it well <laughs> drop the link after whatever that it ends up coming out come back drop the link in the comments and because i'll be posting this in the facebook community okay and uh, this has been a lot of fun i love the color is that fuchsia what color is that it's actually called bougainvillea Bougavelia, or how do you say that? Buga. There's actually this is a flower called Bougavelia, um, and it's found mostly in tropical islands, and that is what this color is. You, they're very small little flowers, this color, and they're absolutely gorgeous. But it's all it's, it's also magenta. I mean, if you want to call it magenta, but um, it's fun. Yeah. Okay, well, I you. love it. I love it. Yeah, thanks for being here today, Mary. This has been a blast. ENTV today members, uh, connect with Mary if what she's saying resonates with you. She'd love to teach you, fill you in, help you level up your life and find out secrets in your closet. Ooh, <laughs> just that awesome. could be a little scary, but also enticing. I love oh, that. Oh, no, it'll be fun. Trust me. Okay, that sounds fun. All right, All right we'll end it here. Thank Thanks you. so much, Amos. All right.